Today, we're going to look at Nebraska versus Maryland and what Nebraska can do to beat in Maryland. So the first thing we're going to look at is Maryland. They have their top four shooters shoot 29, 30, 29, and 31% from behind the arc. So that's going to impact Nebraska and how they play. So the first thing we're going to look at is Nebraska's defense and what they can do and then Nebraska's offense and what they can do. So we're going to look at clips from the first game that they played this year. So the first thing is that Nebraska, with a much different rotation this game, got confused a couple times in rotations with Maryland moving well around, led to an easy Maryland layup. That cannot happen. The other thing to think about is because Nebraska lost two of its better defenders, is how are Sam Hoyward, uh, Vilcher, and Tobinaga gonna impact this. So in the first thing right here, you can see Maryland literally draws up a set to try and get Hoiberg versus an athlete in the middle of the court. Hoiberg should not be jumping in that situation, but it gets them off balance and you have to send a double and it's just gonna lead to layups and or free throws that are gonna be a common occurrence. The last thing is in the first game and Nebraska didn't like this very much, but there were so many fouls called against Nebraska, especially at the rim. You are in great position right here. There is no reason for anything to have a foul called. However, that being said, Nebraska defender number 10 brings his arm down, gets a foul called. Even though Nebraska didn't like many of these, you cannot allow the referee to be in a position where that's gonna happen. Here, we're gonna watch how the defenders play number 12 and number five, Dawson and Griesel in this situation. We're going to see, and Hoiberg, frankly, in this situation. So Maryland plays a pack line, which means they help off aggressively, and they're going to help off even more aggressively against 12, 5, and Hoiberg, the ones they deem the non-shooters. Okay. So this is going to lead to open opportunities on the perimeter, but you can see the only one they're attached to is Vilcher, and that's like partially attached. So this leads to a made three by Hoiberg, but it's something Nebraska is going to have to be aware of, especially if Dawson is in the game. Here. We're gonna see a perfect example is look at the defender that's guarding Greasel and look at the defender that's guarding Dawson up at the top. They could care less about them beyond the arc. They're simply helping out for Derek Walker. Now Derek Walker does a tremendous job, still finishes this, but that being said, that's the kind of pressure that Derek Walker is gonna face in the middle of the court every single time he touches the ball. Here, we're gonna look at when we see the clearest example of this. So Derek Walker is gonna get the ball in the post. All Maryland defenders are looking at the ball, every single one of them. You're gonna see the double is gonna come from 24, the person that's guarding Dawson because they think Dawson is the worst shooter. Dawson does the right thing and he cuts the rim right here and Nebraska shooters zone up on the other side. This is going to be a situation we're gonna see time and time again today. And it all depends on whether Derek Walker can make this pass when the defenders are essentially rotating on the perimeter. So 12 is going to go down, Nebraska, one's going to help him out, and Derek Walker has to be able to make this pass outside of the outside perimeter. It's a tough pass to make, but Derek Walker can make the pass. That being said, this time he does not, and it results in two points for Maryland. The last thing we're going to look at is Maryland runs a little bit of a token press. Don't worry about that too much. It didn't seem to bother Nebraska. But they drop back into this 2-3 zone that matches up to a man later. So we just looked at the man-to-man -man in the pack line defense. But now in the zone, Nebraska had success if they were able to attack it early. So getting the ball A to Derek Walker in the middle allows them to create reads, which is a great pass right here to a layup. And then also attacking with shooters overloaded on one side led to an open result here. So same thing, a lot of times when they drop out of the, the, the press, they go to the zone and then switch it to a man-to-man -man midway through. But if you can attack it while it's still in the zone, especially with Vilcher being this key passer up here, forces the defender to go up and leaves Hoiberg open in the corner. And that's a decent shot.